is my distinct honor to unite Emily and Murph in the most holy of traditions. I object! <laughs> Nearly all wedding traditions are nothing but pointless and expensive displays of wealth. Hi, I'm Adam Conover, and I see the world a little differently. Isn't it weird that our culture is so obsessed with eternal love? Actually, the risk of dehydration is way overblown. <laughs> Pure breeding is a form of genetic manipulation humans made up just to amuse ourselves. I made a dog with super loose skin. I made one with a super flat <laughs> up face. Oh, now that is disturbing. <laughs> I'm your god now. Misconceptions, myths, and marketing ploys, they're all around us. I'm just here to help you see them. This underfunded system has so few immigration judges that each one handles 1,500 cases a year. Supported, 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 supported. Movie ratings are an outdated and unnecessary form of censorship that makes no sense. PG-13 movies have been found to contain more gun violence than R-rated movies. <laughs> in fact, gun violence in PG-13 movies has doubled. <laughs> Yeah, I ruin things, but you'll thank me later. Adam ruins everything. All new episodes return August 23rd at 10. I always cry at verbal contract agreements. <laughs> All right, keep it going for Sam Reich right here, this guy. Responsible for a gabillion YouTube views. Writer, director, actor, producer. Not to be confused with that guy that's on the screen right there. I have shorter hair. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, and president. You have president in your title, my friend. That's pretty <laughs> awesome. So you're, you yeah. are a POTUS, so to speak, <laughs> yeah. as far as the Internet that's is concerned? How I, that's how I make my staff address me, yes. <laughs> that's great. So first things first, congratulations on all the success with College Humor. Uh, those Thanks, two man. words go together like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, they're so synonymous now to the Internet. And... Uh, and so vital to comedy. You guys are a huge piece of the pie now, and uh, that's not something to sit back and, and forget about. You know, it's pretty awesome, so. I wasn't a peanut butter and jelly guy. My mother uh, is British, and she used to make this sandwich for me, which is Nutella and cream cheese. Has anyone ever had that? I highly recommend it. All right, so let me start over. Uh, you are the Nutella and cream cheese <laughs> of a... Uh, so, so, uh, England is obviously a, a big part of your life, too, because before you became all these things, uh, you took the time to, to drop out of high school and uh, head over <laughs> I love, to England. took the time. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And head over to England, right, to, to, to recoup? I don't know. What, what yeah. brought you there? They, they uh, uh, enrolled me in a program for troubled teens. Yeah, I was, I was a little bit of a black sheep in my family. Uh, my parents... Um, come from a very academic background. Uh, they're all professors, actually. My, my uh, father and my mother and now my brother are all professors. Um, and I grew up in Massachusetts, which is sort of the academic you know, capital of the United States, and was always an artist kid and always felt kind of out of place. Uh, and that really came to a head when I was 15 or 16, and I got really depressed uh, and sort of stopped functioning in school. And they shipped me off to this, uh, the, this program was called Interim Programs. And the purpose of it was to try to broaden teens' perspectives uh, by basically shipping them off to a foreign country where their parents no longer have to deal with them. Uh, and man, did it work uh, in my case. Like, it's probably 15 to 17 is the most concentrated period of growth uh, I had uh, as a person. I grew this beard then, <laughs> and it hasn't come off. It's permanent now, right? That's not a henna tattoo I checked earlier. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't come off. Um, so, so with uh, this British blood in you, was that the type of comedy you were attracted to first, sort of the dry wit, uh, you, you know, the, the very just almost like dark self-deprecating style of humor? Yeah, I, I would say I had, uh, I would say I had three major comedic influences as a kid, and the first was Monty Python. Um, that sort of like dry silliness, like adults behaving as stupidly as possible, uh, was really inspiring. Uh, the second was Weird Al Yankovic, and the third was Jim Carrey. 
Um, my bedroom as a teenager was literally plastered in Jim Carrey posters. And there weren't even that many movies at the time. So I had a Liar Liar poster wow. on my wall. That's incredible. I was going to ask you if any of those were hand-drawn because they just <laughs> weren't available. So you're like, oh, i got to make these myself. This is crazy. I also I, I had a habit of writing comedy people for their autographs. I was really into autographs. I, and I still have uh, from Al Franken a note that he wrote me when I was, uh, I think, 12 that says, Dear Sam, someday you'll be doing this shit. <laughs> and lo and behold, here it is. You're doing this shit. So, yeah, congrats again on that. Very He's a cool. prophet. <laughs> now, uh, let's talk about your affinity for Weird Al a little bit, if we could, because, you know, as time went on and you became a full-blown adult, you, you eventually worked with this man, right? And uh, yeah. your, your company is Big Breakfast that you're president of, which is an offshoot of College Humor, and you guys produce uh, almost all the content, can we say? Yeah, we're, we're basically, uh, College Humor and Big Breakfast are somewhat synonymous, but we're the production company spinoff of College Humor. Right. And the reason we call ourselves that is to be able to do things that don't necessarily fit squarely into the college demographic. Right. Case in point, we produced one of Weird Al's music videos. So cool, man. Uh, Foil, which is a parody of uh, Lord's Royals, right? Uh, that's very cool. So what was that experience like to be such a fan as a kid? Tables are turned. Now you're working with someone. You've got to cross that line. Did you practice in the mirror what you were going to say to him the first time? Or were you just cool right off? Uh, I've literally never been more nervous to meet anyone in my entire life. Um, and... Uh, you know, we, we were meeting, it wasn't a casual meeting, it was meeting, you know, specifically in order to be able to set up this, this music video. Uh, and I was really impressed by how um, sort of serious Weird Al is. I mean, he had a vision for this video from start to finish. And he was so articulate uh, about expressing it um, and driven uh, he storyboarded it himself, he shot listed it himself, he directed it himself, and he edited it himself. Um, which, when you're Weird Al, you really don't have to do. Um, but, uh, you know, he, he has a vision and he followed through on it, which was very inspiring to watch. Well, speaking of visions, let's talk about yours, and, and we'll turn on the Wayback Machine here to uh, Dutch West, for those who might not know. Wow, man. An old sketch group, right, that uh, you were a part of that led to your career at College Humor. So talk about those two bridges sort of uh, co connecting and coming together and the history there, because you, you really were a one-man show when you, when you got to College Humor, right? Yeah, we, so uh, Dutch West was myself and four others, sort of similar comedy types. And while this may sound really obvious today, uh, at the time, it was kind of a novelty. We came together essentially to make comedies for, make comedy videos for the internet. Um, this was before Flash had been introduced online, by the way, so we were literally posting QuickTime files uh, to the, uh, that were hundreds of megabytes and making people download them in order to watch them. Uh, but at the time, there was just us and Old English and Whitest Kids You Know, and Homestar Runner, uh, and maybe a smattering of other people doing this. Right. You know, uh, making a video entertainment specifically for online audiences. Um, and we, we had no idea that anyone was watching the stuff because <laughs> we weren't sophisticated enough in order to be able to have analytics. Uh, so we would get the occasional email from a fan um, I remember we did a, a sort of a fake or mock music video to Earth, Wind & Fire September, and we heard from one of the band members of Earth, Wind & Fire, and so we thought, someone's watching. Maybe just him. Uh, and then we had our first live show at UCB, and uh, we just packed the place. We couldn't believe uh, so many people were watching. It's pretty awesome. Good feeling, too. Uh, not knowing if your work is meaningful or meaningless, and, and to, to hear from someone directly from the band, too. Like, oh, my God. Did, were you worried it was a cease and desist? Were you like, oh, my yeah. God, were you, I was were you sure it pants? was a cease and desist. <laughs> uh, I think I didn't open it for uh, 48 hours. I was so sure. 
it's hilarious, like college acceptance letter or something, <laughs> like, oh, mom, just open it for me, I can't do it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so, so you find out it's working, you got the crowds, you have the audience, we go from QuickTime Files to now YouTube, right? So we make that transition. Yep. So you, you find your way to college humor, and th there isn't necessarily anyone running the show there for, for video content, original video content, right? Is that the case? Or Yeah, I mean, I, I, had, I was lucky enough to have bosses who not only were real visionaries, but also gave me a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, there were four original uh, founders of College Humor, but the people closest to me in that process were Ricky Van Veen and Jake Lodwick. Uh, Ricky's now at uh, Facebook, and Jake runs a, an app incubator called Elopath. Um, and there were really rules to online video. I mean, we, we were making it up as we went along. Um, the goal being, how do you find the intersection a viral video and comedy video. If it's merely viral, it doesn't do anything for the College Humor brand. Right. If it's merely comedy and nobody sees it, it doesn't do anything for the brand either. Um, so I've spent the last decade or so obsessing over that Venn diagram. Gotcha. Yeah, I was going to say those two circles barely touch, right? It's <laughs> like they're just kind of... I you I have think, to go to the instant replay to check. I mean, I, I think they converge, uh, but I, you know, there's plenty on one side and plenty on the other right. side. Um, well, more so now, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like back then, it was a very, sure. very difficult task. Yeah. I, I can only imagine. Yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, if, if we decided tomorrow that we were merely going to make videos of exotic animals, <laughs> we would be the most viral thing to ever touch Facebook. Uh, if instead of cast members, we just hired owls and uh, alligators and, uh, and golden retrievers. Right. But that would not do anything for College Humor as a brand. Well, you can, uh, you can maybe make another offshoot, right? <laughs> yes. College animals, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Just yeah. throw college in front of it. Well, you found the sweet spot because you have, uh, dare I say, billions of views, lifetime views of all these videos you guys have made. And, is it uh, billions? I don't a, know. A, a is modest... it four point three two five billion? I don't know. <laughs> Did you hit that today? Did you check today? <laughs> How didn't. often do you check? No. You check? I think it's over four. I think it's over four billion. That's that's incredible, man. Seriously, that's awesome. Round of applause for that. That's not an easy, <laughs> easy thing to achieve in any media. And so I just Sam. learned that it's all been worth it. <laughs> Uh, and, and, of course, your YouTube channel has uh, millions of subscribers as well. And uh, you've turned uh, this brand and, and what you do into almost a school, a place for people to go where they can start out as an intern and become a TV star. And we have a perfect example right here with Adam Loves Everything. We have another season coming our way. This is something that was web first, got to TV, and uh, the really cool thing about this, too, is, is you're going to explain is, is that there's no reason once they leave, they can't come back or still be involved. You know, this is a family. This is like a family scenario that, that yeah. you've created as oh, well. So, so talk true. about transferring things from the web to TV, the success and, and goals, you know, the future yeah, of college. I, I mean, you've, you've described it really articulately. Uh, I want to hire you. Um, the, uh, yeah, the card here. <laughs> You know, the, the, the name college humor now almost means two things, uh, college sensibility and humor, and then also uh, a kind of a, a comedy uh, study program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, it's, uh, we, we essentially have this sort of like Silicon Valley incubator um, but for comedy and for comedy people. And the advantage of making videos as a part of our structure is as a comedy person, you have this long runway in which to identify what is my unique voice and what do I have to contribute comedically to the world. Um, and Adam really is a great example of that. And we got lucky insofar as Adam was our first ever effort at this. Uh, and it's done very well, uh, and we're now headed into our second season of the show. Um, but, uh, you know, I think talent in general uh, doesn't normally have the opportunity 
to make things in a non-pressured environment. Either they're starving and they don't have the resources in which to create anything, or they've been tasked by a television network with very strict demands in order to create something uh, tomorrow, um, you know, with a, with a big staff and under very high pressure circumstances. So if we can find the middle ground, I mean, if we can take very talented people and say, what do you want to make? Let's experiment and do it in a sort of a non-pressured way. Uh, it's, a, it's really the perfect opportunity for talent to grow. Absolutely, in an invite, in a very inviting environment too. People want to be there. You're going to want to put in the, you know, the time and the effort. And you're around family and friends, like people that have the same mindset. And you're going to be at your best when you're in that creative environment, I think. And you guys have created that. So, I mean, that's a side thing that you also did. So, very, very, very cool. We um, also offer free breakfast on Mondays. Oh, nice. It's a nice, a nice spread. Nice buffet style. Uh, sometimes we have, we even have French toast. Nice. Scramby eggs? Scramby Always eggs scramby. I mean, what's, what's a breakfast if not with scrambies? <laughs> That's so cool. All right, so uh, what are your recent posts uh, coincided with this new phenomenon? Uh, phenomenon oh my God, I can't say it. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, phenomenon. There it is. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I couldn't get through that one. Um, Pokemon Go has sort of taken over Earth, right? It literally has. And... Uh, both good things, yeah, bad things. Right. I'm not worried about Donald Trump at all. Yeah. I'm only worried about Pokemon Go. Yeah. I'm surprised uh, there hasn't been great footage of people looking for Pokemon at his rallies. <laughs> like, if someone hasn't done that yet, they should be doing that right now. But uh, you, you guys made a, you came from behind the camera and you were up front and very sad and, and uh, there's a little in memoriam happened. You guys had some very sad news. I mean, not to, to, to be a downer, but yeah, you know, we I want to pay we respect. Did a video um, in which I, I sort of begin the video uh, trying as hard as I can to cry uh, to say that we've lost every, every single member of the College Humor staff has died playing Pokemon Go in the last couple of weeks. And then we proceed to show like the sort of very graphic ways in which they've died in a sort of a picture montage. And what I, <laughs> I, mean, I should have anticipated this. So as College Humor's gone on, uh, and the audience for it has sort of brought it, broadened I mean, on the one hand, the people who are watching us uh, 10 years ago are still watching us at the age of 28 or 30. Um, and on the other hand, the YouTube audience is much younger. Um, and we, <laughs> some 11 and 12 year olds uh, thought we were serious. And we had to get into the comments and assure them that we didn't actually die. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, perception is reality. Yeah. And perception yeah. is reality. My favorite thing about that video, and I don't know if this is weird, is the, uh, or are the tags listed under that video? Like death, <laughs> Pokemon, <laughs> you know, all those random things. You're like, well, I guess if someone's searching death, they're going to find this great video we made <laughs> about Pokemon Go. The views yeah. speak for themselves, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Now, um, Let's, uh, let's talk about some videos maybe that you're so proud of but just didn't hit for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe that's frustrating to you or you're like, man, this idea is so brilliant and, uh, but, but didn't get off the ground and we can celebrate it here and maybe get it the numbers it deserves. Yeah. Like what's kind of fallen under the radar? There are so many of them. I think one of my favorite things we ever did, um, really uh, open your minds, guys, because I'm about to take you on a journey. Um, was we did a sort of a G.I. Joe uh, parody Saturday morning cartoon animated series that imagined that when Osama bin Laden's body was put in the ocean, he didn't actually die, but instead was taken in by a group of uh, highly intelligent dolphins <laughs> and became a half-terrorist, half-crab named Aqua Bin Laden. <laughs> and that the only uh, sort of army that could battle Aqua Bin Laden was a group of government operatives called SEAL Team 6, who were actual SEALs, <laughs> uh, who proceeded to sort of battle a, this new oceanic version of terrorism. We did one episode. <laughs> oh, that should have gone on. should have gone on. <laughs> Well, it's, it's the creative freedom that you guys provide that can make things like this. And, and, and it's the throwing anything at the fan to see what sticks. Because, uh, like you said, if you're, if you're being 
choked by a network for whatever reason, you know, good or bad. Sometimes it's a good thing, you know, but sometimes it can be bad on the creative side. Um, this allows you to take that big of a breath, find out yeah. how far you can go, and then find the happy medium, right? I think that's really true, and I think that we have a duty to experiment. And, and that's been actually tricky in the last couple of years because the audience for the YouTube channel has grown to the size that it has. And with, you know, closing in on 11 million subscribers, we actually feel as if we're under more pressure to perform for that audience than ever before. And sometimes we'll make something um, and, uh, you know, the audience really won't like it. And we'll sort of kick ourselves going, well, what are we doing if not serving that audience? But the answer is we're, we're experimenting. I mean, that remains probably the most important thing that we can do in video. Now, do you, do you guys, or are you going to come out with a cool coffee table book of uh, obscure comments of said videos <laughs> made that we can read that get lost in the sauce because they're 200 deep? You mean an encyclopedia? Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> A to Z. Uh, I, I mean, are you guys big comment readers? Like, do you really we, go in there to find out? Recently, you know? we have. Recently, actually, I have, for whatever reason, I've taken upon myself to uh, weed into the comments and uh, try to respond to things. But it is, uh, I mean, at that sort of level, YouTube comments become really weird and meta. Uh, you know, um, like uh, I'll be combing through and, you know, YouTube doesn't necessarily sort them uh, in, in a, a sort of highest at the very top, so you have to weed through. So this comment skews positive, this comment skews negative. And then toot toot, I'm a tugboat with 400 thumbs ups. And it's like, well, why, like what, what, why? Um, I think it's this funny way in which YouTube has become uh, not just a place for viral video, but also its own community over time. And there are even commenters who go from YouTube channel to YouTube channel um, making inside jokes with each other. So I'm only seeing the sort of top of the iceberg, right? tip of the iceberg. It's like uh, the, the mole people of YouTube, yeah. right? They're just traveling back and forth between tracks. Well, let's not call them mole people. Like, yeah, we, I'm us. sorry. I apologize. Uh, we could come up with a better <laughs> name than that. All right, well, we're going to go to the audience now for some Q&A. And uh, as we get ready for that, um, I can only imagine there's some phenomenal late night stories at the College Humor offices that maybe we'll get into before we close things out. Like maybe just one good one. I'll, I'll plant that seed for you of just people going crazy, spinning the wheels, and then winding up with four days lack of sleep. <laughs> um, but uh, let's, let's go to the audience. We have a question right up here in front. Hey, um, I, I'm really curious. Kind of going off of that, I want to know, who do you allow to sit at your round table when you're deciding what content to put out in the project? And how do you um, come up with like, your budgets? And do you like raise money or just kind of use what you have? Great question. Um, at that sort of round, so the writers uh, you know, will write a certain amount every week, and then we'll take that into a meeting. That'll be uh, myself, my head writer, Mike Trapp, um, our head of production and our head of post-production. We'll, we'll sort of, uh, the, the creative decision is largely between uh, Trapp and I, um, of course, with this sort of question of feasibility that the production and the post-production team is, is tasked with answering. Um, and as far as budget is concerned, I mean, we're lucky to have a, a parent company in IAC, Interactive Core. Um, they also own Vimeo. Uh, they own Tinder. Uh, along with OkCupid, along with Match.com, they're all the same company. Open your eyes. Uh, and they're, they're very supportive of our efforts in general from, from a budgetary perspective. Um, I will say that I think that we, we, we spend more money than a lot of our competitive set. I mean, we, we spend more money on our digital videos, uh, you know, than BuzzFeed does, uh, than some other comedy websites do. Um, and the reason we do that is because it's an investment for us. It's an investment that then pays off in long form. It's an investment that then pays off in advertising. Um, and I think it's also for me to do with this sort of battle against mediocrity. Like, I don't want to 
produce a web video that feels like everything else that's out there. Um, I come from a, a short film background, and I want to do stuff that's a little bit more high production value or cinematic. This may get me fired. <laughs> Don't necessarily take it as advice. Well, if anything, it makes the dating scene at College Humor very interesting now that we know all those are available to the staff. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Wait, weren't you, you were Peter on the other site. Who's this <laughs> Travis guy? Um, all right, another question out there in the crowd right over here. Hi, Sam. I just want Hello. to know. Hi. I just want to know how you met Weird, Weird Al and what's your um, what's your favorite Weird, Weird Al um, video? Great question. Great question. I think we. I think I met Weird Al for the first time through this opportunity to produce his music video. It's funny. I. Uh, you know, living in Los Angeles and doing this for a living, you, you know, you inevitably meet people. We actually did a music video with Michelle Obama last year, uh, which went, went very viral, was, was a great opportunity. Um, but meeting your heroes, I mean, there's no more nerve-wracking experience in your life. Um, and after working with him for a couple of months, I, you know, I realized there, there's no way, I mean, this guy gets told all the time that he was an inspiration um, to youth, but there's no way that I could really convince him what he meant to me as a comedy influence. And so I found a, a video of myself at the age of seven uh, lip singing to him in drag and uh, sent it to him as like an FYI. This is what it means to me to work with you. And he was very, uh, he was very flattered and disturbed. Did you send it in QuickTime, or did you... Uh... <laughs> it was a private YouTube... Oh, no, it's actually public. It's on my YouTube channel. Oh, no, it's there. It. Yeah. Everyone check it out. Comedy Gold, there it is. Yeah. And my favorite Weird Al yeah, video song. or song of all time? I think my favorite song is Amish Paradise. I know all the words. It's my go-to karaoke song. Uh, my favorite music video is either White and Nerdy or Dating Back a Bit is uh, Smells Like Nirvana. It's a fantastic. This Space for Rent, right on the side yeah. of that guy's head. <laughs> Love that video, too. It's a great one. All right, we got uh, one more question over here. Hi. My question to you is when you have the urge or the craving to eat Nutella and cream cheese <laughs> and you're out in the States, what do you stuff with it? Like, what do you choose to eat if you can't have that? So the question is, what do I choose to eat instead of eating Nutella and cream cheese? <laughs> yeah. There is a flaw in this question. Um, actually, on uh, just, just a few days ago, I was on the set of Adam Ruins Everything. We're still shooting. The show will premiere and we'll continue to shoot. It's a hard show. It takes up a big block uh, of time to do. And there's a craft services truck that has uh, Nutella and cream cheese, and I had two. Yes. So it's in your rider. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, thank you to the audience for all those questions. And uh, let's plug thank some shows real quick before we go. Adam, yeah. Adam Ruins Everything is Adam back on True everything. TV. Yep. Premieres. We got Bad Internet on your uh, Bad Internet YouTube. is our YouTube Red Show. It's a, essentially a Black Mirror parody series, an anthology, a, a sort of a Twilight Zone-ish anthology series uh, that pokes fun at the Internet and Internet culture. Please check it out. I'm very, very proud of it. Yeah, it's very cool. And, uh, and congrats, too, on Time Traveling Bong, which uh, found oh, its way to Comedy Central yeah. on 420, go figure. Right? Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, that was appropriate timing. Absolutely. I, I assumed you were going to make a joke and put it out on 421 and just say you were late or whatever. But, <laughs> but uh, I guess the press people wouldn't like that. Yeah. Right? Uh, well, that's a very, uh, we did this micro short on College Humor ages ago with the Broad City team, um, who are all just immeasurably talented folks. And then they went and did Broad City. And the entire time they were doing Broad City, it was sort of this recurring joke. It's like, when are we going to get to our passion project? <laughs> time traveling bong, which is exactly what it sounds like. A couple of stoners take a rip from a bong that, that takes them uh, sort of back in time and a whole magical time traveling journey. And then Comedy Central went for it as a mini miniseries. Uh, and we did three episodes uh, uh, around 420 of this year. Yeah. So who needs the Saddam thing, right? You're fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, congratulations to you on everything, all the success. Round of applause for Sam Reich. Pretty amazing Thank work. Thank you for making the internet fun, man. Thanks, man.